Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the CompTIA CISA Plus. I recently obtained this certification. I wanted to speak about it, kind of uh, what to expect from it, the study material I use. I only use one, one uh, source, and I actually think this source can be used for really anything. Um, this video is not sponsored, by the way, okay? This is truly something I use and the only thing I actually use to study for any of my certifications, and that will be the case until I think I need something else. So yeah, this video is just generally talking about the CompTIA CISA Plus. Okay, so for one, my background, I'm a lead security analyst. I have been in cybersecurity for three years. Before that, I was in tech for two years. So five years of uh, IT exposure. And so that kind of gives you a little bit of a, an understanding of my perspective of the exam. So usually for a person I've seen online, they can typically obtain the CISA after studying for about two to three months. I studied for three days. Um, I'm laughing because every time I create these videos, I'm like, I did it in less than a week. I did it in five seconds. But I don't compare yourself to me. I have a very unorthodox kind of history. I've been studying cybersecurity for like the last eight years in various ways. What in the world? I accidentally had some of my classical music playing in the background. But but yeah, uh, the resource I used was Cybex. Okay, the S-Y-B-E-X. Uh, it's from Mike Chapel. He's a PhD and he has various cybersecurity certifications. And I believe all of the books that he creates the um, regarding the certifications, he has the certification as well. And he just creates the books for us to consume and use. And that's all I used. That's all I used for the CISA. That's all I'm using for the Pentest Plus. That's all I'll be using for the CASP and the CISM and the CISSP, etc. cetera. Um, as far as I'm aware, that's all I'll be using. So. I definitely suggest it. It was a great resource. I mean, I I used ChatGPT to determine where I was weak. And then I kind of studied those chapters more than the other ones. But really, I studied every chapter except for like two or three. Because um, the two or three were just pretty easy for me. But uh, yeah, I think it... It reflected very well onto the exam. I had five practice-based questions. Uh, I can't say too much, right? They have you sign a non-disclosure agreement, but uh, the information that I'm sharing is all kind of available online if you're able to find it. But yeah, so I had five practice-based questions. I think that's the most that you can have. I had like 68 questions, I think. Yeah, I think I had about 68 and the, the very first question was a practice-based question, which is, I, I think is how it goes. They put all the, the practice-based questions first. And the very first question was tough. It was not a good introduction to the exam. I was like, did I study enough? Did I use enough resources? Um, and I remember spending like eight to 10 minutes on it thinking, okay, I need to move on. So I flagged it. I had only completed half of it. I flagged it and I moved on and I decided to just flag all of the practice-based questions or the PBQs and then just do them at the very end. Okay, so I flagged all five. I didn't even look at the rest of them because I was like, let me gain some more confidence in this exam before I lose it all. And yeah, so I just continued. The rest was, okay, I don't think I can say too much, but multiple choice definitely is all I'll say um, and, and there were definitely a few questions that were some head scratchers I can say this I can say make sure you understand the uh, CVSS or common vulnerability scoring system at the very least understand how it's structured that was the only thing that really stumped me and I can't say I can't go into too much detail still, but that was the only thing that really stumped me. And to definitely make sure that you understand that. And I specifically 
mention that because I feel like the rest of the exam, it wasn't too technical other than the practice-based questions. Um, it was more so you understanding the vocabulary, you understanding the relationship between certain activities, certain vulnerabilities, certain certain kind of logical steps. Like, what would you do here if you saw this? Okay, what would you do after that? What would you do before that, right? And if you're practicing f for the exam or if you're studying for it, you'll understand what I mean by that. Um, I think it is a good exam. The score I got, am I allowed to share the score? I don't know. I, I got a pretty good score though, especially considering I only really studied for it for three days. Uh, granted, I did read through the book, but um, yeah, after I read through the book, I also did another kind of practice exam through, uh, well, through Cybex. They also have uh, practice tests, which was pretty nice too. I took the uh, Cybex practice test. I got like a 75% on the test. I was a little bit let down by that, but from my research, I saw people getting a 70, or wait, I got a 77% actually. And I saw people online getting 75% and passing the actual uh, CompTIA CISA by a good margin. So after I did the research on that, I was like, okay, I feel good about it. I went through that practice test. I saw what I missed. I made sure that I understood why I missed it and what the actual answer was. And of course I use ChatGPT to help set up another kind of small practice exam just around what I missed. And a specific study guide just around what I missed, right? That's what these practice tests are for as well, okay? When you're doing the practice tests, it's okay that you don't get a perfect score, like that's fine. Uh, just, it's great to see what you just need to study. It's great to see your weakness area because then it really hones it in, right? Because who's trying to read a whole book twice? Nobody, okay? You can read through the book one time if you want. Even that might not be necessary. Like how I took a small practice test and I decided what I could skip, right? Like which chapters I could skip. Um, but it's great to know where you're weak because then you can just really pound on that. Um, you can like really hone in on that. And make sure that where you're weak, you're very strong now, or at least you have a good understanding or a familiarity where you didn't before. So yeah, definitely I suggest the Cybex. Um, and yeah, that was kind of like my overall CompTIA experience. Now, when I went back to those practice-based questions, yeah, that first one, I, ah, man, I wish I could see the answers to those practice-based questions at least, because I wanna see if I missed anything even, what I missed and what the actual answer was because they were pretty interesting. Now what those practice-based questions went into, let me be very general because again, I cannot say too much, but I'll tell you, okay, I'll say this, I will say, understand the cyber kill chain understand the diamond um what's it called the uh, see I, I don't even know it right now i don't know the name but if i saw it i would know it but if you're studying for it you know what i mean it's the diamond like vulnerability it has four different sections of kind of um, the stages of an attack, right? Or like the stages of an attacker. Uh, so yeah, so the diamond, the cyber kill chain are two things I would definitely get familiar with. And to also have a familiarity with Windows command prompt, okay? And just a familiarity, right? I mean, you could probably just study like 30 minutes to an hour, okay, of the Windows command prompt and just have a general understanding of what some of the commands do, 
okay? What the expected output of those commands are. You do not need to know how to script. You don't need to. You just need to have a familiarity. And I think that's all I can really say about the exam and some of the practice-based questions. And yeah, that's what I'm comfortable with sharing. And yes, so I do think it is a great exam though. I think it does test your knowledge fairly well. And the Cybex source is a good source. So that is my my spiel about the CompTIA Cypsa Plus. Feel free to give me some comments, reach out to me. Um, if you expected something else to be in this video that wasn't there, I can answer that for you. And yeah, that's all I have. So thank you guys for watching. If you're new, subscribe, like the video if you found it valuable, and until next time, see you guys.